The first step in today's shoot is spending $60 for parking. We are driving into San Francisco to meet up with a filmmaker named Alex Long. Alex found me through my YouTube channel. He noticed that we had a lot of mutual connections in the area and he reached out. He's like, hey man, let's connect. And I was like, yeah, I'm down. I could tell that he's in the industry and seemed like a talented, interesting guy. So I was down for it. And I'm so glad we did. Alex is focused in the camera department. He's a DP camera operator and even has the equipment to set up a video village. So great guy. It was really cool hearing his story, how he grew into the industry, what have been the ups and downs and where he gets most of his business. He was just a really cool guy to connect with. And if you're looking for someone like him who has his skill set, you should totally reach out. Really, really nice guy. Earthquake. <laughs> this is the setup that we're going to be using. We're doing a docu style of video where we're showing a cool event that happens at the Giants game and then interviewing people who go to the event. But we're going to be walking along the streets of San Francisco and we do not want to draw attention. So the idea is have a small enough setup that you can fit everything into your backpack. And using something like that would just draw way too much attention. So we're going to be using our FX30, a wireless lavalier system. Um, we base we have a Sony 16 to 55. This will, this is basically a 24 to 80. For 90 percent of our shooting, I think we'll use this. My buddy Michael Crocker encouraged me to bring a prime for our interviews. So if we have time to switch to a prime and get make the interviews look a little bit nicer, we'll do that. But this is the setup, just trying to be as minimal as possible. And that all fits nicely in our backpack. Uh-oh. <laughs> I may have a new gear problem. I keep going back and forth in my head on whether or not I should bring a prime lens or if I should just bring one zoom and not think about lens changes at all. And I've decided to leave the Prime behind so I have one less decision to make because we don't have a lot of time and we got to move fast and it's just me. And instead, we're going to add one more thing onto the camera and that is a shotgun mic. Up the audio quality a little bit. I did some testing and what's really cool is when this shotgun mic is plugged in, it gets prioritized. And then if I want to switch to the lavalier here, then I just unplug it, boom. And then so you can see here, boop, 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 boop. Our lavalier is plugged in. And we only need one lavalier for this shoot. So it should, uh, that'll be no problem. But with this setup, I won't need to change anything except for maybe the ND filter on the front. And I think, Make, having to not make as many decisions like that will be very helpful. Major change in plans. Oh man, my wife just found out that backpacks are not allowed into the ballpark. So everything needs to fit in that now. And there we go. We're gonna have to walk around with it like this. Nicely, it presses up pretty nicely against my body if I just wanna, if I just wanna hold it which is nice, but that's how small we're going to have to keep it. We can't take anything off of it or apart. I'm going to have to carry this the whole time. Then everything else is in here. We've got audio. We've got NDs. And we've got batteries. And that's all we can bring into the park. And one last very important thing is I'm bringing a stack of business cards. We've got our plan for the shoot. Let's see how well we can stick to it. A few days ago, I was walking along this and I walked too close to the edge and this thing came smashing down on the ground and landed on my toe. It's gotten a lot better, but it hurts a little bit to walk. And today we're gonna have a lot of walking on this shoot 
So that's a challenge we're dealing with. We're all set up. We've got our pouch, camera, pretty minimal. Let's go. The $60 parking may be worth it. Definitely got a little limp going. Try not to walk on my toe, it hurts. About as close as we can get. And we need to go across the bridge for the gathering. So let me give you guys a little context. Months back when I had been in the Bay Area for about a month or two, I gave away a free video shoot at a Chamber of Commerce meeting. That video shoot got won by a financial advisor, but he said he couldn't use it, so he would prefer to give it to someone who could use it more than he could. So he gave it to a friend of his who was a realtor, and that realtor asked if I could make a documentary style video about this cool thing he does for all of his clients once a year. He takes them all out to dinner and then to a game. So we're gonna capture that. Here we are, it's like four or five months later after that was one. So now we're gonna, now we're gonna shoot it. So the place we're having dinner at tonight is called Spark Social. It's this cool outdoor collection of food trucks and Jim has a tickets for each of his clients that they can grab from him and they can just go get food for free. Jim was available when I got there so we quickly shot this introductory interview. Sounded great. We had this whole area closed off just for Jim's clients. So that was nice to know that anyone in that area I could interview. Guests started showing up. I started grabbing B-roll and my gosh, it was so bright. I was sticking between six to seven stops of ND for most of this, which I didn't expect. Then I started grabbing interviews. I grabbed a total of five different interviews and a whole lot of B-roll. Pretty much everyone I interviewed felt very relaxed. And if they were a little tense at first, they relaxed pretty quick. I kind of wonder if the small camera helped. After we got all the interviews and all the B-roll we needed at this spot, we sat down for a burrito and some of my best friends showed up. And my sister. <laughs> and my baby. <laughs> now we're walking to the game with my BFFs <laughs> and the super duper Magnolia. Yeah! Such a beautiful day. My foot is really starting to hurt. I want a, another jacket. I'm gonna drop this burrito off at the car. So it's, it is nice being this close to the park. We can just visit the car real quick. And off to the game we go. Hopefully security lets me through. And they did. It's fun being at a Giants game. It's just a happy, fun environment. We were all seated in one section, so I got busy getting as much B-roll as I could of the different people in that section and Jim interacting with them. Then I started pulling people aside for interviews. There's a lot of signal in the air during the event because tons of people are using their iPhones, but these UWPs cut through it no problem. It was super loud though, so in the editing room, I still needed to use a lot of noise reduction on top of these microphones. So this is what the final result sounded like. He's always smiling. He's always got a good attitude. He's always got a great perspective. So we get into his car. He takes us on a tour. We looked at probably three or four houses. After shooting four interviews and as much B-roll as I could, the game was done. And I couldn't even tell you what the score was. It just went so freaking fast and Jim was about to leave and I said Jim like we gotta we gotta do a closing remarks a closing interview of you and he's like okay but I could tell he's really in a rush so we didn't have time to mic him up so I'm like you know what I've got a shotgun mic let's just use it and that's and this is what it ended up sounding like guys I just want to tell you how grateful I am that you all came tonight what a super fun night it was and I appreciate every single one of you thanks again for coming the 20th was the best of all just got our final video of our client right there, Jim. We didn't have time to mic him up, so we used the shotgun mic, and it sounded good. We just had him stand right over there. As soon as the game ended, these birds swooped in. Look at them. Man. Look at them all down there. Beating up the place. And 
And then uh, they have a little room I bought mowing the field. Now one over there. <laughs> That's so goofy. <laughs> At the end of the day, we walked away with nine interviews of guests and two interviews of the realtor, which is a ton of interviews. And honestly, not something I anticipated going into this. I thought we would get a few interviews, people talk about the event a little bit, and then I have some footage and then I just edit it into a highlight video. Boom, easy, great night, we had a great time, we loved ourselves. But what I didn't expect is how much these people loved this realtor. and. I didn't expect all the stories that I would get from them and all the detail that I would get and I got a lot of detail. So it it's made this whole video that I'm creating a lot more complicated because there's a lot more depth to it. So I think that's a good problem. <laughs> I thought the video would just be done here. I'm backing up my files. I'm a good little video guy. But then, look what I got in the mail. Uh, first sponsored package. This was sent to us to try out the Molus G300 from uh, June. I have no idea if these guys make good lights or not, but they wanted us in one. So I said I'd try it in the video, so we'll try it. So if this light does what it's supposed to do, then I think it'd be a really cool light. I just don't know about this company or not yet. I've read a lot of mixed reviews on B&H, so I don't know about the quality or reliability. Um, I think these guys are pretty new to the light game, but if it does what it says it will do, then it's gonna be a cool light. So this is the whole thing right here. It's 300 watts, and this just plugs into, this just plugs into this here, and you, you know, monitor it, but 300 watts and it's this small so it feels like there's a lot of there's a lot of plastic on it but then there are some metal parts like this yoke so this feels kind of like somewhere between an aperture and an amaran a lot of plastic on it and they said this is a bowens mount so let's let's try and see look how tiny this thing is <laughs> It's surprisingly bright. Like that's, uh, it seems about where the 200X is, like the Amaran 200X, about the same brightness level. And you can adjust the Kelvin. Wait, no, you adjust the brightness through this knob, which feels good. And then the Kelvin through uh, this one. This little thing feels great. You can kind of just grip it. And okay, the fan kicked in. Okay. So this is at 100%, 4,800 Kelvin. We can see through the window clearly. And how bright is that? If I'm looking at it, it's like the sun, so. Is it like kind of too bright? Like if I was interviewing someone, it'd probably be uncomfortable to be that bright? Yeah, unless it, I was like looking further away, I guess, but that wouldn't really make sense, would it? So. Yeah, that's true. Cool. It's not too bad for Thank like you. five minutes. Yeah, that's, that's pretty bright though. We're trying to see how bright that little light is, you know? It's bright. Yeah. Now both fans are running. There's a little fan here. This one's pretty quiet. This one's definitely noisier. You're over here, you can't really hear it, but right next to it, you can hear it. Apparently, if we press both these buttons at the same time, it'll enter like a max mode. It'll, it'll go up to 500 watts. Let's try it. Okay, it says CCT max. I think that's brighter. Compared to that, yeah, it's a little bit, a little bit punchier. Also fits the aperture lantern, no problem. It's a little, little play, but it fits it. I think most of the time, this is how I would use it with a lantern box like this, just as a fill light. Definitely a nice and small package. Our final test for today is we're on the overclock mode. So it's supposedly 500 watts pretty dang bright. It's at 100% and we're going to run it for an hour. I don't plan on using overclock mode most of the time, but I kind of want to just stress test it. It's already heating up pretty quick. This is the main thing I want to know about this light is how reliable is it? 
is it gonna fail or how long can it push out a ton of power? I don't know. About five minutes in and the fan has gotten really loud. This is louder than I would want on a shoot. On a shoot where we're doing interviews, that would be too loud. But maybe if you weren't doing interviews where you don't need audio, that's super loud. Hmm. All right, it's been an hour, 100% overclock mode, and everything is warm. So overclock mode is not like what it's designed to be optimally used at. Apparently it's like optimally designed to be used at 300 watts, but then overclock mode pushes it to 500 watts. So you're, you're not supposed to use this mode if you're like above 80 degrees, somewhere around 80 degrees Fahrenheit outside. So this is a pretty cool environment. Um, this is hot to the touch. I can only touch that for, well, it's hot. It's hot. Everything's warm, and the fan has stayed just as loud as a, as it peaked earlier. As loud as it got, it's just stayed at that high loudness level. But still running an hour later. Now I'm turning that mode off. I'm going to keep it at 100%, and then I'm going to come back in a few hours. I'm going out to dinner at a friend's house. I'm going to come back in a few hours, see how it's doing. Actually, almost immediately, the fan has gotten a lot quieter, like 50% quieter. That's more bearable. I could, I can deal with that in an interview. I'd be fine with that. All right, we'll, we'll leave this for a few hours, see what happens. All right, so the light has been running at 100% in the normal mode for three hours and 47 minutes. Not that loud. It's warm. That's warm, but definitely not as hot as the 500 watt mode. Everything seems to be working. Cool, okay. That definitely ups my confidence in this. Now it's time to use it in the, in the field. I'll do that uh, next opportunity I get. I'll put a link to this in the description. It's not an affiliate link because I didn't want an affiliate link, but I told them I'd be happy to try the product out. And if it's good, I'll put a link in the description. And actually so far so good. I really like how small this is. So there's a link in the description. If I were you, I would wait a little while and see how this works out for me. But so far so good, cool light.